I gotta find uh, Kevin on here. Let me see. There we go. What's up, brother? How you doing, my good brother? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I was actually getting I was actually getting some sleep today. You you need some rest, man. You're burning the candles at both ends and in the middle. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm good, man. I got it. It's this new app called Clubhouse. Okay. That they never should have invented. <laughs> now what's that about? It's like a, it's a, it's a, um, it's like an audio chat socializing okay. app. So everybody gets on there, and then we find like interesting things to talk about, and then we just okay. talk all morning, <laughs> all all morning, bro. <laughs> so it's like we we pick we pick things to rant about, and we just go off. So. That shit, I don't need that shit keeps me that. up. It, keep, it keeps me up all morning, and then I end up going to sleep in the middle of the day, and then that's it. Hey, I miss my midday naps. I I, I don't need an app because I'm up talking all day anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? How you feeling? I'm good, man. I, I'm I'm supposed to be on vacation next week, but all that means is I don't go to the office because I never really stop working. Um, which is not a complaint, but you know, I haven't taken a vacation this year, man. And not like I'm going anywhere. You got so, a, you got a vacation policy? What's your what's your um what's your thoughts on vacations? Because I, I got I got a um I got a thing about vacation. Well, I definitely want to hear yours because I keep failing at mine. Uh, my wife and I have an agreement that when we go on vacation, we're supposed to leave work behind. But I fail miserably at that. So, and then this year, because of COVID, you know, we like to travel. We haven't been able to travel. So mm -hmm. I was like, why go on vacation if I'm not going anywhere? Um, but that's a recipe for disaster, too. So t tell me about yours. What's your vacation policy? I'm trying to understand why everybody thinks that it's so imperative to do uh because sometimes you just need a mental break away from everything mm. <laughs> that don't work for you i mean man honestly a vacation might be like that might be more stressful than being here yeah yeah because when like, well for me for me, when I come back, all the work has piled up because people don't act like you've been on vacation. They yeah, keep that's emailing. One, that's, that's one thing. That's one thing. Yep. And then too, it's like, I don't know, man. I think it. I think this speaks to my OCD. Uh huh. But if I if I have like a whole lot of ideas mm -hmm. that aren't that aren't flushed out all the way properly, they they it feels like they're hanging over me. Like I'm like. Okay. Like I need to get them flushed out before I can relax. Like I pace around. Okay. So if I'm if I'm somewhere with my wife, God forbid, we on some island somewhere, mm -hmm. and she telling me to sit down, and don't touch the phone. Yo, that should be like hell. <laughs> no, nah, be like hell, man. Like I I gotta. I need to I need to feel like I'm following through with my ideas, yeah. and I need yeah. I need to feel like I'm I'm um I'm on, I'm. I'm working some sort of plan and I'm moving purposeful. You know, like it's hard for me to feel like I'm moving purposeful when the purpose for, is for me to not move. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it is. It's a struggle because I get that. And for example, my wife and I just started going on cruises. And part of the deal we have when we go on a cruise 
is that neither one of us can purchase the internet or phone package because that way we're cut off from everything while we're at sea. The problem for both of us is as soon as we pull into a port, we both run in to a Wi-Fi cafe or something so we can con get connected and find out what we missed for the last day and a half. Right. So it is like that. But I, but I also say this too. It gives me some time to refocus because in some ways I'm like you. I'm always thinking the wheels never really turn off for me. I don't sleep much. Um, when I go on vacation, I honestly, I'm still thinking about work and making plans about work. But when I don't have to be on the phone and I don't have to do conference calls and I don't have to do meetings, then it does give me some downtown for my body to kind of refresh and reset. And I do come back feeling a little more relaxed and energized for like the first few days. And then it's just like you've never been on vacation again. Mm -hmm. So it, it's mind games for me. But um, while, while we got all these wonderful people tuned in, man, first of all, thank you again for taking the time to do this. Wayne State reached out to me about a week or so ago and said, hey, we have enough students on campus that are expressing some mental health concerns that we want to put together a mental health day. And they said, uh, they said, we know a short notice. We know you and Royce are pretty busy, but is there any chance that you guys might be able to host an IG Live and, and, and talk to the people? So I appreciate you taking the time to do it. I know not only the students at Wayne State, but we actually sent this out to, there's an organization called Active Minds, which is a college mental health organization. It's a national college mental health organization. There's probably about 20, 25 chapters here in the state of Michigan. And so I know some of those folks are logged on too. Everybody's really interested in hearing about why mental health has, is so important to you and, you know, learning about the Ryan Montgomery Foundation. So you want to take a couple minutes and just tell everybody, you know, why this is your purpose, why, why you're so passionate about it, and then what we hope to achieve with the foundation. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think um, me, going to, me starting to, to go to therapy about yep. maybe eight years ago, that was like my, my, my first step my first step to a, to what I feel like is a better a better life for myself is it just put me on a particular path you know okay I started to learn that this shit it, oops excuse my language I started to learn that this thing is like it's not it's not about the the chase or the journey I used to think it was like a journey that that we're on creatively okay. and just in life but I started to realize that it's a it's a place that you have to arrive to. It's a destination. Okay. You have to get to a place where you understand who you are and um you understand how to how to begin to get better just as a person. You know, because yeah. like we come into the we come into this business and we get told stuff like you gotta you gotta pay attention to what's going on, you gotta stay relevant, you gotta look at this, you gotta look at that. But what I'm learning is you just got to learn how to get better. So in, yeah. in order in order to, to be able to do that, you have to be able to identify with the things that can be fixed. Mm -hmm. And we all we all have those things. None of none of us are perfect. None of us will ever be perfect. You know, so yeah. I feel like that's the first step. So when I started going to therapy, I started to just learn about some of those things. I when I'm on here, um, I, I started to learn about things in, my, in, in myself. I started to identify with things in myself that can, that can be fixed. Um, I started to identify with just all kinds of things that I didn't know was bothering me, um, feelings that I was suppressing, a lot of things linked to, to trauma, um, just to be able to see those things, be aware of those things, be able to place even titles on them even even to be like yo that's trauma that's that's a traumatic experience that affected me in this way okay that correlates to this because this happened this could be the reason why you're i'm drinking or this could be the reason why 
I react this way in certain situations, or this can be this can be the reason why I don't communicate so well once I get to this point of contention with my wife. So I started to um I started to just try to work on those things. So I started working on on being uh, a better communicator, a better father, a better husband, a better everything. So I I started to learn that if you can if you can become a better person, then you can become a better everything. So I I stopped having to work on like my artistry and all of that type of stuff because it automatically gets better. Everything automatically gets better as long as you can improve. Yep. You know what I mean? So um it started just doing wonders for me across the board. So um uh, I started to learn a valuable lesson about having the luxury of being able to place perspective on things. And just giving yourself an opportunity to see the world the way you were intended to see the world and give yourself a real shot to really be able to apply some things in a fair way. A lot of us are just born and we're put into positions where we're just behind the eight ball in a lot of ways where either we're not in a position to hold ourselves accountable or we hold ourselves accountable for things that we ain't necessarily get a fair shot at taking a crack at. You know what I mean? Yep. So um, I just feel like therapy is the gateway to all of these things that I've been that I've been talking about. And I feel like that every black person needs it. Every black person. Every single one of us. You know, so um and then I and once I started to to, to tap into that to that side of it to that way of thinking about it um i started to to notice a stigma mm -hmm. with, with, with mental with mental health and with therapy in our community and um it bothers me a little bit yeah you know because yep. i was a i was kind of a part of it myself you know i had my my preconceived my preconceived picture in my mind of what i what, what therapy was to me prior to um to going. Yeah. And um I wasn't real optimistic about it at all. And when I went when I went the first time, we were just we were just gonna talk about what in my mind, we were just gonna talk about um addiction. Yeah. We were just gonna talk about alcoholism. And um I I was gonna stay in that box in my mind. And when I went in there and I started talking to my therapist you know, we were, he was asking me questions and we were talking and then um, we started talking about my childhood. We started talking about different things. And then one thing led to another. I was in tears. Mm -hmm. I think I told you this before. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I'm a cancer. So I'm a, I'm a very emotional person, but I'm not like, um, I don't cry a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm emotional, you know, like with my words, I yell. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> so, so like, just that emotion coming out, like tears, um, it let me know that what we were talking about bothered me a little bit more than I thought, even though, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't know if it had, if it had something to do with my ability to be able to express how I felt about certain things or I don't know what it was. So um, I ended up finding out that, um, I started to develop this bad habit of suppressing feelings. That's what he, we called it, suppressing, mm -hmm. suppressing feelings. So basically, um, if I see something traumatic or if I see something that bothers me, inst instead of um, dealing with it or unpacking it the proper way, I just take it and put it somewhere else so I don't have to look at it or see it or deal with it or think about it. Yep. Just suppress it compartmentalize yep. it, put it away, put it in yep. a drawer, close the drawer and just walk out the room. You know, yep. that's what I did in my mind with mm -hmm. everything growing up. So just growing up, I didn't deal with a single emotion. Okay. Nothing. So I go to a funeral, nothing. Everybody's crying. 
I'm in the funeral trying to cry. <laughs> yeah. And can't cry. You know what I mean? Like I was that kid. You know, so um and I guess I, I guess if I could retroactively look at that, it was a it was a safety place for me. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being at a funeral and you don't have to cry? Mm hmm You know? Yep. So so I mean I guess it's the body and the brain's way of just like protecting you. Yeah. Protecting myself. So um when you develop these different characteristics and these different different um so, so, social and mental defense mechanisms that you develop within yourself, um it kind of it kind of puts things at bay and it kind of protects you from having to deal with things head on. Mm -hmm. But all of that shit comes back in some way, yes. and it all comes at a cost. It yes, sir. You. It cripples you in, in in different ways, and um, those different ways of being crippled, those different little characteristics and things could be the very things that hold you back from something. Yep. Rather it be um, missing out on a, on a on a beautiful relationship, which is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Or um the opportunity. Yep. Um it could aid in some sort of fear that's not healthy in taking the next a, a, a future step. You know? Like yep. it's it's something to be said about leaps of faith in life. You know? Yep. Leaps of faith in life are very important, man. Yep. Especially in the music business. If you can't find the courage to take a leap of faith. You're done. Okay. You were done before you started. Okay. This is, this is not the fear business. This is the this is the this is the accept accept the fact that things are gonna go bad. Okay. This is that business. If you can accept that, if you can somehow find a way to get yourself to that place, then you're in a better position. But all of that is like having a whole lot of confidence confidence in yourself. And like, then you're able to tap into all of the anecdotal things that get regurgitated, like mind over matter and all of that type of shit. Yeah. Because it really is. It starts to it starts to feel cliche, but it really is. It's really just mind over matter and perspective and all of that stuff. But if you can't like, if you can't even like power past your, the transgressions that you're dragging around, then you won't have a shot. Yeah. Well. You hit on, I, I always love having a conversation with you because you hit on a lot of things like trauma. Um, you know, you and I have talked about, uh, we call that adverse childhood experiences. You talk about um, not a, being a crier, you know, and men, and, men in our culture, um, we're protectors and providers. We're not supposed to talk about feeling anxiety or depression or, you know, uh, trauma from what happened last year, last month, whatever. And many of us compartmentalize like you're talking about. And like you said, all of that stuff that we put on a shelf, it manifests and it comes out one way or another. And sometimes it comes out, like you said, destroying relationships or you, you have an inability to even get into a good relationship. Um, it comes out in mental health issues, you know, where your your mental health gets worse. It comes out in terms of physical manifestations too: uh, high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke. Um, people who live with mental health conditions have a, a lifespan twenty five years shorter than people without mental health conditions, and that doesn't include people who die by suicide. This is people who heart disease, morbidly obese, um, stroke, high blood pressure, all of those things that trigger inside our body because we're not taking care of our minds. We're not taking care of our emotions. So I love when you talk about that. Um, and you use the term, we, uh, you've used it a couple times around me when, when we talk about what you want to do with the foundation and raising mental health awareness and awareness of resources to uh, 
quite frankly, the black community because we are an underserved community. And I know, you know, you have a a wealth of of um of fans um, that are international, doesn't matter, black, white, and all that. But I, I understand and respect that the focus of the foundation is to raise awareness in the African-American community, because even though stigma affects us all, it varies by community. And in the African-American community, we don't get professional help. We all kind of have the, the same belief or view of mental illness or getting mental health help that you said you started with. So you use this term more than one time around me. Uh, you, you use the analogy like mental health care is like a concierge service at a hotel. And you use this phrase where you said you want to bring privilege to the underprivileged. So mm. do me a favor, talk a little bit about that, because I love that view and that vision that you have for the Ryan Montgomery Foundation. Yeah, I feel like I feel like mental health care, therapy, um, all of these things are like an amenity. Mm -hmm. if we were if we were staying at a hotel, it's like being able to use the gym at the hotel or use uh, go get a free massage or something like that. And um, though these services are available to us to degrees to varying degrees mm -hmm. and um in different areas we either the we the awareness either is not there um we either don't want to mm -hmm. don't care or just don't know about it yeah and um i feel like that needs to change and it needs to be re readily available to us and um it needs to be presented to us the same way it's been presented to everybody else Mm -hmm. And um, I know I've been triggered a lot through the tr through the whole pandemic, but this is not one of those things where I feel like it's been presented to other communities in a different way. I mm -hmm. just feel like there's, there's something within us that we're just against it. We're just against yeah. it. We we're not we're not really trusting. Yeah. Um, and and it's just we I don't we we've all evolved from the same sort of thing, so I don't know what 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 the stigma is rooted in but um i know that it needs to change and i know um it's our it's our community specifically that there's a that there's a stigma and that that's a problematic area so um just being able to kind of read the room and see that um uh, i just want to start taking steps to kind of fix some of these things yeah and um i just realized that we we have a lot of problems in our community and um it's very difficult to come from our community where us being a minority and um, us having so many fucked up problems in America. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got compassion and love in my heart for, for everybody, for all human beings. Yep. I just feel like our community, our black community, too many of us, like, for lack of a better phrase, make it. Mm -hmm. and focus on the whole world like we we want to we want to change the whole world i just don't feel like it's that cut and dry okay. i feel like i feel like there's a reason why our community is underserved and overlooked i feel like that's a whole different conversation yeah i feel like in this medium right here and within the parameters of this conversation mm -hmm. i feel like we need to start to pinpoint problem areas and just start trying to work on them one thing at a time. Yeah. And when you, when you do that, when you start to focus on things and not try to do too many things at once, I'm a horrible multitasker. I feel like when you begin to do that, um, you can look for more realistic results. Okay. So um, I feel like black people, achieving some levels of success and turning around and focusing on our community to better our community because the key is to better self yep. better each other mm -hmm. and then once we better each other we can make everything better yep. you know a better black community is a better black world period yep. you know what i mean so um that's kind of like that's kind of like my focus so I want to use the foundation to focus on many things. 
mental health is just the first thing because I feel like that's the base. That's like the root. Yeah. If this was a tree, this is like the first seed that, that we need to plant. Many things will grow from this. Many branches will grow. Many leaves, many olive branches, many things. Many things that, that, can, that, can, that can aid in doing our part to make the, just make the world just a better place. Um, I know that sounds cliche too. What the fuck? To make the world no, a better no. place. But, 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 I mean, you know, one thing, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. And it's, it's just so many things that's happening in life right now, man, like this in my family, um, brothers, cousins, friends. Um, every time I see another black man get killed right on camera for everybody yep. to see by either the police or just some unfortunate, you know, set of circumstances, it just, it, it just affects me different, man. Like it affects me different in my forties than it did in my thirties. Yeah, and I think that I think that's gonna happen to all of us. I think yeah. we're we're all growing. We're all growing into that same thing, you know. Like in your thirties, it's like, well, okay. In your forties, it's like, fuck. Yeah, this is still happening. Yep. This is like this is still this is this is a thing, you know yep. what I mean? So like you can you can kind of overlook it and you can kind of pretend like. It's not happening because it's not happening, you know, right outside your doorstep or whatever you want to think, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But history didn't stutter. Yeah. History didn't stutter. And, um, you know, like achieving some levels of success and then feeling like that that separates you from the reality that's happening. I think it's it, it just, it's more, that's really being complicit with, with history repeating itself. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? You, so, I, I, yeah, well, again, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so that's, that's to me, that's being complicit with history repeating itself. So I just want to, I just want to start, I've been saying that I wanted to be more purposeful with my moves. Like, I don't want to just do shit, you know? So yeah. this is, this is like, I, I think the, better steps, better steps to, to, to just, if not changing things, if not changing the same cycles that are repeating, if we can't offset those cycles with our actions, then we gotta, if we're not focusing on those cycles, then we need to focus on new cycles, new cycles in our communities that are gonna repeat themselves from generation to generation that are just helpful to us, as opposed to things that just keep contributing to the detriment of us individually and as people you know well again i agree with you because and, and again I, i've kind of gone through the same manifestation you're talking about as i get older i see the world from a different through a different lens and i start to think about how i can make things better quite frankly and you know in the midst of this COVID pandemic we also have to deal with this social injustice, racial discrimination pandemic that we've been, quite frankly, ignoring for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm, I'm happy that we're at this place in America, and I'm just gonna focus on the United States right now because I, I think it's bigger than that. But I'm, I'm happy we're at this place where we recognize that racism is a health crisis and most and i was at lunch with some um business uh friends today who happen to be caucasian and we were talking about you know the 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 quest for social justice or equality as we're calling it socially um you know politically correctly um these days and the gentleman i was having lunch with said yeah you know kevin i didn't realize until quite frankly george floyd you know and he said hey i I have black friends. I had a black roommate in college and all of that stuff. He said, and quite frankly, I never really thought about what the difference in your experience and mine. And that George Floyd, I look at the George Floyd situation. Uh, I'm, no, I'm going to say it like it is. The George Floyd murder. I, I look at that very much like this is our generation's bloody Sunday. 
what Dr. King and them went through trying to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge um, in 1965. America, good people in America who didn't want to believe that racism was so brutal and violent got to see it on, the, on TV. We got to see that again early this year with George Floyd. And it, it opened a lot of people's eyes on both sides. I'm one of those people who believe, like you, first of all, we have to control what we can control. Um, and, and, and I think you start with yourself. And I think we have to learn to take care of ourselves. And I think that begins with acknowledging that racism is a health crisis and affects our mental health as much as it does our physical health. The other part is how do we start to improve ourselves? Because as you mentioned, access to behavioral health care in the African-American community is very different than it is in other communities. There, there's a huge disparity. Um, and some of the things you talked about a little earlier, why don't African-Americans seek mental health care? Because we don't trust the system. We don't trust the doctors. We don't trust the medication. And it's because historically we've been experimented on. We've been misdiagnosed. We've been underappreciated, underdiagnosed. We've been told that that kid is just bad. He, you know, he's not ADHD. He's just a bad kid. Lock him up, you know. And so we have a mistrust for the system. But we have to try to find, I think, a balance because in that mistrust, we're cheating ourselves out of, and I'll go back to the way you described your experience. You said, hey, I realized after going to therapy that I was in some ways harming myself by compartmentalizing and putting these things on the shelf. And now that I'm addressing them, I'm a better husband, I'm a better father, I'm a better person. So we African-Americans have to allow ourselves that, that experience by getting mental health help if we need it. Um, the other thing is, you know, in our communities, man, we got to love each other. We got to take care of each other. We have to quit hurting and killing each other. And I understand a lot of people you think that is because of we've been put in this situation where we're economically disadvantaged. And I understand that there's some truth to that. But I think there has we have to arrive at a place where we say we're going to be strong enough to overcome that. I'm not going to kill my brother to take what he has. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, we can do better. We can take better care of each other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what I love about, again, what you're doing with the Ryan Montgomery Foundation, getting that started, having these kind of conversations, because a lot of it, uh, you've mentioned the word cliche a lot. A lot of this stuff sounds cliche, but there's some validity to it. And we have to start somewhere. And we have to start by taking care of ourselves and taking care of our, each other. And as we get better, as we better take care of ourselves, honestly, the world benefits. It's not just black people who benefit. Uh, you know, on social media, I see this thing that I love. It says, um, equality is not like pie. We're not going to take your slice and give it to somebody else. Equality benefits everybody. Um, and, and so I want to see us as black people embrace that and say, you know what, we're going to control what we can control. We're going to take better care of ourselves emotionally, physically. Um, we're going to be better husbands, fathers. We're going to be better members of the community. We're going to live that. We're going to do everything in our power to live that dream. Um, and what you're doing with the foundation is a great start for that. Um, it, it, because I also realized part of the stigma of getting behavioral health care, and, and I, I rather use the term behavioral health care because, as you know, you can't separate mental illness or mental health care from substance use, um, from people who experience suicidal thoughts, um, from people who have developmental disabilities. So it's really all behavioral health care. But we have to take care of ourselves, and the world will benefit from that. So, um, and I don't, you know what, I haven't talked to you today. I got some good news for you with the foundation because, um, and, and I, wanted, I want you to talk a little bit about this, but you chose 
when you decided to establish a foundation you, uh, and, and address mental health, you said, who do I connect with? And so you chose to collaborate with NAMI and with CNS Healthcare and my buddy, uh, Michael Garrett. Um, it was just announced today that CNS Healthcare is merging with another behavioral health organization uh, called Northeast Integrated Health. It's, it is rooted in the city of Detroit. Okay. And so the, the good news about that is now CNS Healthcare will be able to provide more services, uh, a, a broader range of services to more people in the city of Detroit. Um, but not only in the city of Detroit, because they are what's called a CCBHC, which is a, a certified community behavioral health uh, center, mm -hmm. they can provide services across the state of Michigan. So when people call uh, the Ryan Montgomery Foundation number 833-ROYCE-59, anywhere in the state of Michigan, we will be able to provide them and connect them directly with behavioral health services simply as a result of calling your, your 800 number. So we've wow. already, so in two weeks, man, mm -hmm. you went from announcing a foundation that was based, going to start for Detroit, and we've, we've taken the next big step, and now we're statewide. So That's the next right. thing, man, we're going to go national and global. But, right. you got, but you got that started. So do me a favor. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, again, because I want people to understand what you want to do with the foundation, why you partnered with, with or collaborated with NAMI and CNS Healthcare, what you want this to look like, because you've also talked in the past about, you know, your vision of one day somebody will be able to call a 911 number that is specifically for mental health related issues and a mental health professional will show up, not a policeman with a gun and a badge. Yeah, well, I'm just a, I think being an artist just made me a really, really logical thinker. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I overthink things a lot, but I think really logically a lot and it's something a little bit off to me about calling 911 when there is a problem mm -hmm. and reaching somebody who has problems <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> like it's 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 like so i feel like the police need therapy i feel like the ambulance people need therapy yep and I feel like that there needs to be a mental health care responder as a, as an additional option. Yep. When you when you dial nine one one, I think um, what's what's uh, man, it's been so many man. I'm I'm like, I'm I'm trauma pouring out. What's what's my what's my man's name that they, they, they just killed in Philly? The Philly in Philly. Kid. Yeah, I can't remember his name either. Uh, Did they? Because they, yeah. I know I know they said something about um, they didn't die. What did they say? Um, they dialed nine one one. I seen some story. I didn't get a chance to read it because I was building something out there. But I think they they were they were seeking like a mental health care yeah response. Yeah, you so, know what I'm talking so, about. Yep, I know what you mean. So what they did, they called nine one one. But this young man, and I hate that I can't remember his name off the top of my head either. But Walter his Wallace. Walter Wallace. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Walter. Sorry about that, John. Okay, go ahead. No. Ahead. So his family called because he has serious mental illness. And they specifically asked for, and it's something that I do training in, uh, they asked for a CIT officer or something that's called crisis intervention team officer. Those officers receive special training specifically on how to deal with people who are in the midst of a mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. And based on what I've seen, and I have some uncut video that somebody else sent me from Philly, um, that whole thing was not handled right. That whole, matter of fact, that whole thing was handled wrong. Mm -hmm. but, but to your point, that happens way too often. Um, they're, they're, the whole reason we created CIT was because back in eight, 1988, I think it was, late 80s, uh, Memphis Police Department had a similar call and they killed an unarmed, mentally ill man who was in the midst of a crisis. Um, 
And there was such public outcry that the Memphis police got together with the University of Memphis and called NAMI specifically and said, can you help us create training to prevent this? Mm -hmm. So it's not a magic bullet. It doesn't solve all of the problems, but it is one of those tools that can save lives and protect the officers because officers are always trained officer safety first. And I get that. But the fact of the matter is you're supposed to be peace officers and you're supposed to serve the public. Um, and I have the same right, whether I'm mentally ill or not, I have the same right to go home safely as you do. Your life mm -hmm. is no, just because you wear that gun and badge does not make your life more valuable than mine. Um, and so I have, I have some issues with that. Uh, and one of the ways we're trying to address that is through training them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other real cool thing through your foundation, because there's so many good programs and opportunities out there that people don't know about, officers can learn about CIT training. Officers, first responders, as you mentioned before, uh, whether they're law enforcement, EMS uh, operators, um, emergency room operators in hospitals, you know, all of those people uh, deal with a lot of trauma, too there are actually programs available for them as well. Because like you said, we all need help. Mm -hmm. And so if any of those people call your 800 number, we will connect them with that. As a matter of fact, NAMI just created a new program last month called NAMI Frontline that is specifically for first responders. Mm -hmm. so, so all of these resources are really available through your foundation. Nice. Nice. And it, and it's just the beginning. It, it, like I say, it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to solve all the problems, but it addresses some problems. And a lot of the problems, I think you made the point earlier, the public simply is not aware of the resources that's available to them. And yeah. so if they call your 800 number, we will educate them about what resources are available in their community. We're not going to have them, we're not going to have them jump from uh, phone number to phone number. We will directly connect them. If they say, hey, I have a child with a mental health issue. I'm a cop. Uh, I'm experiencing trauma. I don't want to talk about it on the job. I think, you know, my, my partners are going to look down on me or something. They can come to us and we can connect them to programs that will directly provide them with the resources that they need. And all of that starts by just dialing one, dialing 833-ROYCE-59. You know, you know something about our community, man? What's that? Uh, and it, it's completely understandable because I was the same way. People are probably thinking to themselves, like, what's the catch? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> wait a minute. So you're saying all I gotta do is dial this number. There has to be more to it than that. Because we're not used to we're not used to shit being that like that. Exactly. We're not used to it being that way. You know, and but it's literally all you have to do is call a number. You know, we're so used to being manipulated, taken advantage of. We're not used to people wanting to help us. We're yeah. not used to us wanting to help each other. I go through the same thing in the music business. I pride myself daily on just doing things for people. Mm -hmm. People are so disarmed and taken aback when you do something for them and don't expect anything in return. Yep. It's almost yep. like they don't even want to get off the phone feeling comfortable. It's like, thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're welcome. Yeah, you're that's welcome. it. One selfless well, act at a time. You know, like, well, it's like focus us focusing on us, us sharing information. You know, like we spend we we've been spending years just talking about talking about all the problems, just pointing out everything that we see wrong and pointing out everything wrong that we see each other doing and just not enough, just not enough of taking steps to, to not even to rectify, but just to make better. Yeah. You know, there, there's certain things that are just going to exist. You know, um, we can, we're not going to fix violence, you know, like we're yep. not going to fix that. We're not going to stop people from getting angry. We're not going to stop people from having disagreements. We're not going to stop some of the things that go on in our communities but we can stop it from being objectified. We can stop it mm -hmm. from being, we can, we can change the perspective on violence in our communities. 
Yep. We can stop. We can we can remove ourselves from under this microscope that we're under, and we're being made to look like we're like violence in our communities is different from violence anywhere else. Yeah. We can take better control of our own narrative. We can we can like be rep we can be the representatives of what we want to be, how we want to be viewed in the world, how we want to be perceived. We can exactly. choose we can choose those words. Exactly. Well, and, and real quick, let me jump in because you said uh people always want to know what's the catch. There's no catch. And I want to be clear about this. When they call 833 Royce 59, there's no catch. There's no cost. Because especially because NAMI is a nonprofit education support um, provider. We don't charge anybody for anything that we do. CNS Healthcare is a certified community behavioral health clinic. That is huge because what that means is that they get federal funding to provide service to anybody who comes through their door at no cost, regardless of your ability to pay, regardless as if you have health insurance, regardless if you have Medicaid or Medicare, they will take care of you at no cost. There's no catch. So mm -hmm. all they all they have to say if they choose to is thank you mm -hmm. and go on. So I want to point that out because I want people to know there's no catch here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can you can donate to the Ryan Montgomery Foundation if you want to. Exactly. You don't have to. Yep. You don't have to. You know, you as soon as you start talking about donations, it's like, oh, here we go. They're scamming. Yep. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah. you don't have to. Don't worry about it. I'll pay out of my pocket to pay my staff. Like exactly. this is about this is about the people. This is about us. This is about us getting better, us taking steps, and us just changing the way of uh, of the thinking. The thinking of the youngins coming up. You know, we got to start training our, our children to think differently, and we got to just stop um, normalizing all of these horrible things that they yeah. don't have to, it, it, they don't have to be that way. We can change them. We can change well, them, but we got we to take the steps. I hope people will appreciate what you're doing, and, 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 and I don't want this to come off wrong because I mean this genuinely. You don't have to be doing this. You know, um, we get to a point in our life where we want to give back. We want to make the world a better place. You are not, you're not just lending your financial resources. By bringing your name and your celebrity to this, it opens a door to an opportunity for people who would not come to NAMI, who would not pick up the phone and call CNS Healthcare if they or their child or their spouse need a behavioral health help. You, you being who you are is a resource in itself. And and this is not, and, and I'm going to say it, this ain't about kissing your ass. This is not mm -hmm. about putting you up on a pedal. So this is real. And we we as black people, we as people in the world need to appreciate when another human being cares enough, and you said it earlier, you said it 30 minutes ago, you care about people. And so when another human being is willing to go out of their way and give up their time, their talent, their resources to help somebody else, maybe somebody I never even met. It's a fan, somebody who idolizes you, loves and respects your music. And then you say, I'm going to step outside of that and do this other thing. Man, we have to learn to appreciate that. We really do. And so I hope your fans get that. Uh, and, and I hope people are, uh, appreciate that because this whole stigma uh, of getting behavioral health help, the more people like you and, and I mean, and there are other celebrities, Demi Lovato. I mean, there's people all over. You and I have talked about Snoop, um, uh, Charlemagne the God. You know, mm -hmm. the more of us who come out and talk about this and say, you know what? It's OK to get help. As a matter of fact, you'll be a better, stronger person if you get help. That will touch somebody and they'll say, if Royce does it, then it's OK for me to do it. It's OK for me to pick up the phone. And after the, the day after we had your press conference on the 10th, our phones lit up the very next day. Now, some people was trying to meet you and get a record deal, you know, <laughs> but a lot. Of, but the vast majority of the people who call said, how do how do I get the help that I need? 
And so what you're doing is a big deal. And, and I hope people really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. It, it's, it's, it feels good. It feels good. And I definitely, uh, having kids, having kids would inspire it always. Oh yeah. You know? Because you just go through, we go through so much stuff, man. And we, we get to a point where we, we've been blessed enough to be able to see the world and, and like compare where we are to the way things are in different places and the way that they all kind of correlate with each other. And yep. um, it, there's been times where I've been afraid, man, like afraid to raise children here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And it's just like, that's no way to raise children. You can't, yeah. you can't be constantly in fear. Yep. So, I mean, what else can you do? What else can you do but but take steps? And then, you know, like the the internet, just social media in general gives you like a, an avenue to um to voice to voice your concerns and 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 and, and speak about the problem. You mm -hmm. know, it gives it gives you an avenue to be lazy about things. Yep. Because what's happening is um we're socially engineering like a a um a thing, a thing that's, that's, I'm complaining and I feel like I'm doing my part by doing that because it, it seems like I'm being heard by so many people, you know? So, yep. so people are like, we're literally, we're literally going onto our phones and seeing all of these horrible things happening and we're looking at everybody's reaction to it in real time, but very little of those reactions are, um, solutionary, solutionary yeah. measures. Yep. It's just a whole lot of people yelling. It's just a whole lot of noise. So I just want to see a day where where there's a there's a there's a very clear narrative being shaped and there's a clear understanding of what what it is that we're advocating and what it is that we that we're talking about. Because a lot of these conversations turn into straight up arguments. Mm -hmm. You know, like like we're like we're asking for something. Yeah, you know, like people people are are feeling like, what are y'all complaining about now? Yeah, you know, and it just feels like it feels like that moment in the argument where, okay, now we're both just saying things on each side to, to hurt each other's feelings. To hurt each other. We're yep. past the point. We're past the point of reaching a resolution. Yeah, and I don't have time for that anymore. Yeah, I don't have time for that moment of contention with me versus anybody me us us as a people versus anybody now it's just about all right man what's the next step yeah and yeah and like the smaller the smaller the step the more i'm comfortable with man because it's yeah. just like i don't know exactly i didn't know coming into this situation exactly what to do mm -hmm. so i just i just kind of like <clears throat> compared it to exactly the way that I approach music. Like I can't do everything in the studio. I don't know how to do every single thing, but yeah. I started to learn that if you put the right people together, as long as you're able to like identify with who does what yeah, and who needs to be in the room. And I also learned the importance of too many people being in the room, not being a good thing. Yeah. And as long as you can assemble the right people, then you can get anything done, you know? So I kind of, I, I use, I use what I learned with being in various groups and music and just, um, happen to coll collaborate on, on a lot of different projects and a lot of things that were successful, a lot of things that weren't successful. That's very, that's very important. Yeah. Like taking some losses, taking yep. some losses, learn my most valuable lessons. So, um, with this, I just told myself, I don't exactly know what to do. And I know usually when I don't know what to do, I do nothing. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, I'm, I'm going to stop doing that. So if I have a thought, even if it's just one of those premonitions that hit me really late at night, I'm going to do something about it. Yeah. I'm going to take steps. I'm going to take steps because at the end of the day, there's no, we have nothing to lose. Yeah. We have nothing to lose. You well, know? <laughs> And that's that's kind of like what I wanted to, what I want to convey to 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 the people, especially the youngins. It's like, work your ideas. Nobody's gonna come remove you. Nobody's gonna come fire you from anything. Nobody's gonna come and do anything. You're not as under scrutiny as you think. 
Yeah. You know, and this is just this is just a solutionary re reactionary time, man. This is not. We don't have time. We don't have time to be sitting around talking about stuff. We don't have time for meetings. Yep. All kinds of meetings where all of these people, people just in meetings, just, you know, just meeting about things. Yep. Just talking. Ain't yeah, doing we, nothing. We, just talking. <laughs> we, we passed that. We passed it. No more meetings. No more meetings. <laughs> just, let's, we're going to do it. We're going to do it or we're not, you know, so yep. let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. And if it, if it's not, if it doesn't go how, you know, like how we would hope, that's okay too. Let's just, let's just keep finding different ways to hit it until we hit something, you know, because that's, I feel like that's what this, this, uh, this margin of life that we have, you know, like this window of opportunity that we have called life. We got yep. a window of opportunity to do many, many things. And I don't want to just be, I don't want to just be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to just be around. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be great, man. I want to do great things. I want to do, well, I want to do great things. I want to inspire great things. I don't want to be associated with a whole bunch of stupid negative stuff. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want my name to come up in, in, in the same conversations with things that I don't, I'm not even interested in. Yeah. You know? Well, so that's well you, like where I'm, where I'm at with it. Well, it's like you said earlier, you know, people got to take their shot. And, and, I, and I remember you once telling me what a great basketball player you were in high school. And, uh, a legend, and so, a legend, a legend. A legend. I'm sorry, legendary. <laughs> and one, one of the things that us ballers, players understand is the old saying, uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Mm -hmm. Young people got to take, and I've always encouraged young people, take your shot. Take, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, take your shot in life. Because the biggest regret I think you can have is when you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, past your prime, whether it's a ball player, whatever it is. But when you're sitting on the couch looking back at your life and you say, man, the biggest regret I have is I never took my shot. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I've always encouraged my kids, take your shot because I don't want you, I don't want you to have that moment. I don't want you to be sitting on the couch. Like I said, in your 40s, you said, man, you know what? I should have went to that basketball tryout. I should have did this. Take your shot. One of my, you biggest, you one of my biggest pet peeves um, when, I, when I finally became an adult, and I knew I was an adult when my son, when I was now the father on the sideline watching my son mm. in the game playing basketball. <laughs> yep. and, he, and he's on the team, and he's apprehensive about taking certain shots. Mm -hmm. And you have like the coach, and then the coach's son is like full of confidence. Oh yeah, and he's taking too many shots. <laughs> Yo, yep. I just want to go on the court and just kick somebody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, because it's like that's life. Yeah, that's basically life in a nutshell. You know, yep. like the kid who's bursting with confidence. He's he feels entitled because his father is the coach, and he feels like he has a place on that yep. team, you know? Yep. And my son feels like an outsider because yep. he came into this situation, you know, they met everybody that's on the team, even though they're working in a team atmosphere, they all met each other through this process and everybody's just filling everybody out. But the mm -hmm. coach's son, he's connected to that, he's connected to that whole scenario just differently from everybody. And that is America. <laughs> yep. He know I'm the coach's kid and I got the green light. I can shoot all day. <laughs> I'm not getting pulled out of the game. I'm going to shoot all day. Uh, my son was playing high school basketball. And he used to come home to me and say, Dad, I think the coach hates me. He said, because the coach is always yelling at me. <laughs> and, and so I told him one of the things that I learned is if a coach is yelling at you, it's because they believe you have something to offer that you're holding back. I said, mm -hmm. the coach that you really got to worry about is the coach who says nothing to you because that coach gave up on you. That coach, you you just out there running around. Mm -hmm. So I go to one of his practices and the coach is yelling at him. But what the coach, and I, I used to tell my son this at home before I ever heard the coach do this in person. I said, son, Get past the method. Get past the yelling. 
and hear the message. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm at one of his basketball practices, I heard the coach scream at him. And he said, Dominique, trust your God-given talent. And my son stopped and looked up at me at the sand, and I just put my hands up and I said, see, this coach wants you to shoot. This coach mm -hmm. wants you to trust your talent because he knows you can help the team. And so my son, it was at that moment, and, and my son was in high school. I think he just he was still 17, might have just turned 18. But he finally got that message, and he finally understood that. I said, listen to the message, not the medium that he's conveying it to you. Yeah, he's screaming. And I'm, I'm like you said earlier, I yell. I'm, I'm very emotional and vocal that way. Mm -hmm. But I say, listen to what I'm saying to you. Hear the message. Uh, and young people will benefit from that. I know we're near the end of our hour. Um, I, again, I appreciate your time, man. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I know the students at Wayne State University appreciate it. And Wayne State actually has a, a, a student chapter of NAMI. They call themselves the Wayne State uh, NAMI Warriors. So I got to give a shout out to the NAMI oh, Warriors. That's incredible. Yeah, they, they're listening. Um, shout out to the NAMI Warriors. Um, and and they, they were really excited. Like I said, they didn't think you had the time to do this. And when I told them you did, man, they, they appreciate you so much. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your advocacy and what you're doing in the community. For those of you young people who are listening to us, stay tuned to Royce because he's got some great things coming to benefit you uh, and here in, in, in all of Michigan um, because now we, we're expanding. Um, and if you are experiencing some mental health crises because of this pandemic we're living with and social isolation and all the things that are and are not going on on campus, please reach out to us because there's help available. It's not weakness. It's actually strength. Just dial the, the 800 number, 833-ROYCE-59, um, and we are there to help you. So thank you. Royce, you got any parting words for people? Yo, you just summed it up perfectly, man. Um, everything that my brother Kevin just said, um, thank you guys, too, for all the great work that you're doing. Thank you, Kevin, too, man, for just inspiring. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, um, bringing me up to speed and, and making me way more knowledgeable and making me sound smarter than I really am. I really, I really you a smart brother. That. You know that. <laughs> but, yeah, but thank you, man. Thank you. And, yeah, let's let's just continue to try to move the needle you know what I absolutely mean? i definitely absolutely. appreciate it and it's always a, a pleasure to talk to you great one you too sir get some get some rest man I, nope nope <laughs> i know you're not <laughs> all, right, peace. all right thanks everybody peace